There's some truly awful and annoying people on this planet. Folks who just get out of bed in the morning and say to themselves, I'd like to be the most annoying person possible today and everyone around me should be inconvenienced by my very presence. Unfortunately for all of us, and more specifically the residents of San Francisco, there is one person in particular who not only makes that choice, but also has an unlimited amount of resources at his disposal for making himself the center of negative attention. It's like having chronic main character disease, but the problem is that Elon Musk actually might be the main character in a hell world that we're all cursed to inhabit. Until proven otherwise, I guess he is the main character. Yeah, it sucks. This story sucks. And we just suffer around him. I mean, he's got the time, the money, the minions, and the childlike brain that can turn even the dumbest ideas into reality. Like, I don't know, buying Twitter and destroying it by turning it into what appears to be a porno app or by taking the completely unoriginal new logo for his garbage platform and erecting it on top of his headquarters and absolutely blinding anyone within a four block radius with ultra bright flashing LEDs. It's yeah. A, it's a beacon for sure. His defenders are like, oh no, those are offices, right? It's like, no, those are homes, not just homes. A lot of old people live in those homes. <laughs> oh God, the rapture, it's here, it's finally here. So yeah, this was of course done completely on a whim with absolutely zero consultation with local residents or the government. Mm -hmm. And it was also erected with what appears to be cheap, possibly dangerous materials held down by sandbags at a height that could easily prove deadly if anything caused it to topple over or break apart. Wait, is San Francisco a windy city? Is it known for having wind? Oh, it does? Yes. Mm, that's not good. I, in general, even before this X was erected, um, just, I would steer clear of Twitter HQ. The smell from Elon Musk not bathing, the <laughs> constantly falling uh, bricks and signage yeah. and disrepair, uh, probably a lot of things going on. Some dark energy aren't emanating getting... from that building. Yeah. But yeah, aside from the safety issue, issues, it was just an obscenely bright column of LED lights that continuously blasted the surrounding area in blinding light and pulses and strobes. Just set it on the most annoying setting possible. Yeah. Gotta let them know you're there. It's like actually Everything the, goes to 10. It's actually the perfect metaphor for what he's done to Twitter because he's made it uh, just a overwhelmingly annoying experience now. I have to sort through 50 of the dumbest people I've ever heard of under any reply to yeah. any post. It's uh, it's it's the perfect metaphor. Also, I don't I don't think this resulted in any, but uh, it was a concern brought up that anyone who would who might be epileptic would uh, not have had a great time walking anywhere near this thing. Yeah, there's uh, but of course you know he's not he's not worried about that. He doesn't even know he's, it exists. He's thinking ten steps ahead, baby. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there really is no other explanation for a move like this other than I'm doing this on purpose to annoy everyone around me because I want them to hate me. And if that was the reaction he was looking for, he definitely found it because mm -hmm. after just one weekend, the logo has been removed after the city of San Francisco received nearly two dozen formal complaints and countless more on social media, including videos from residents who live directly across from X headquarters. And yeah, those POV shots really drives home just how maddening this might be. Uh, Very annoying. Thank you, sir. They also, uh, the city uh, showed up multiple times. Trying to get... And was can denied... Can we take a look at that? They because were denied access to the building, which I'm like, you, it's weird that you can just say no. Okay. What was What you've done is just put a bunch of loose metal together, multiple stories in the air, in a city where wind is constantly cutting through. It's fine. we got a lot of sandbags. By a bay. Anyways, in one tweet, which included a video of the X logo doing its annoying little light show, the user added, I would be fucking livid. Imagine this fucking X sign right across from your bedroom. To which another user, journalist Christopher Beale, replied, <laughs> Imagine no more. This is my life now. And showed a video from his window directly across from Elon's extremely bright sign. The, the funniest take I saw on this was that people are starting to just credit all of these terrible ideas directly to Linda Yaccarino instead of Elon because she is the CEO. So obviously this was her idea. Right. This And this is exactly what we said the moment that was announced. Uh, she's the fall guy. Yeah. 
So I love I love the, the framing. Fall gal. I love the framing of this being entirely Linda Yaccarino's fault. Clearly, this was Linda's idea and not perfectly in line with everything else we've seen directly from Elon Musk. No, she did this specifically to spite the residents of the building across also, the street. Also, I loved all the all the simps being like, oh, if you hate this, uh, why don't you also hate Times Square? It's like, I do hate buddy, Times Square. Buddy, we all fucking hate Times Square. It there's, sucks shit. There's a building in Los Angeles that is so fucking bright, you can see it uh, like 15 miles away from Griffith Park. The, the big block building in downtown, I think they actually had to turn down the brightness because they got so many complaints. Mm -hmm. But yeah, for a while in Los Angeles, we had at least temporarily outlawed digital billboards. Yeah, good. Yeah, I think they're good. back now in certain cases, but uh, yeah, they are really fucking annoying and a distraction. And you know what? The old version isn't great either. Get rid of all billboards. Yeah, do it. Open those skies back up. Uh, anyways, aside from annoying the neighbors, it also was erected without a permit or safety inspection from the city, and the San Francisco Department of Buildings claims that their inspectors were refused entry into the building multiple times over the weekend after cases were opened against the company for erecting the sign without approval or oversight. And yeah, maybe they thought like, oh, it's the weekend. They, they, they won't be working on the weekend. We can get away with it. Yeah, move fast and break things. And by things, I mean local safety ordinances. And potentially the lives of anyone unlucky enough to be walking move under this. Move fast and break the skulls of anyone walking underneath your stupid building. Uh, here's some more from Matt Binder's reporting on Mashable. According to the inspector on the scene, a company representative declined to provide rooftop access and explained that the lighted sign was a temporary structure for an event. The inspector noted that he spoke with the property manager and attempted to gain access again the following day. Upon arrival, access was denied again by tenant, the inspector wrote in the public case notes filed with the department on Saturday. The inspector issued the company with a notice of violation which may result in fines due to the lack of a permit for the structure. I, I, I saw the report. It was very funny that the local building inspector called it Tweeter multiple times. Didn't call it X, not even once, but didn't even call it Twitter. Called it Tweeter. A yeah. Tweeter representative denied me access. They make speakers here. To the Tweeter building. <laughs> so yeah, the giant X was finally removed on Monday afternoon after barely surviving the weekend. But one X that is here to stay is the one related to the mobile app, because an update was pushed to users over the weekend. Forced upon users. Uh, yeah, I, I learned way too late that you can manually stop updates. So I've done that now, but I'm probably too, too late. I'm very close. I almost did it today. If it weren't for doing this show, I would have already. I was very close to deleting it off my phone. Oh, yeah. No, if not for my job, <laughs> my livelihood that I've chosen for myself, which requires me to be monitoring just Elon Musk 24 getting hours a day filthy in the content mines all yeah. day uh, mm -hmm. there would be no reason for me to use this fucking thing the uh, blue, but alas the the blue twitter bird that has been removed was the canary in the coal mine and well, we are all choking that canary to death is now dead yeah uh, but yeah so it's x now folks yeah and uh, that yeah. happened over the weekend sorry so that thus another chapter comes to an end for the app previously known as Twitter, and now, for there, now, nothing known as X. Very little, if nothing, left of. I mean, they, the, the only thing they're not even called tweets anymore. They're called posts. Yeah. So, wow, you, you great, brilliant gambit, sir. Yeah. You've you've uh, gone with the more generic term when you bought a website that had penetrated the cultural consciousness so so much that yeah. The word literally, tweet actually, literally added to the lexicon yeah. as a brand specific term, and you've just gotten rid of it. The only remnants now are all of the stuff that they can't switch over because it's like legacy web content, like yeah. the way certain things are labeled. Or, and I'm sure he'll get to that point. But they it also is, apparently, I don't know if this is true anymore, but uh, it seems that they had forgotten that there are actually two Twitter apps. Uh, one, Twitter Lite, is intended for uh, countries, places that have uh, worse internet access. Yeah. Uh, and that one still seems to exist on the app stores as Twitter Lite. Okay, well, his reasoning for that is that they probably can't afford XBlue anyway, so... Oh, also, I haven't looked into this, but... Uh, so, Twitter is very popular in Japan. Mm -hmm. It's like, after the U.S., I think it's their biggest market. And um, due to Japanese laws, like, they can't 
change the name to, to X. In, all all in, things uh, that Japan. probably should have been tested <laughs> way before this er erratic decision was yeah. made. This seat of the pants moment probably should have been at least researched You'd a little bit. You'd think for something he's been obsessed with for 30 years, uh, he'd, you know, go into this with a little bit more forethought, but the, no. One of the random self-owned things about this, too, is be, is that it's drawing even more attention to his previous attempts at launching X, the Everything app, and in all of those photos, he is clearly bald. Like balding, not like yeah, no, bald, he's, uh, but uh, a, a, a very obvious that he has gone through gender-affirming care. Yeah. Which is ironic, obviously. So the new app logo uh, on your phones is now that porno logo, just the X. And very questionable for anyone looking at, uh, hey, what, what are you using there? Oh, X? You looking at porno on the bus? You're is that fired. What you're doing? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> looking at porno at your desk? You're fine. What are all those tabs across the top of your browser? Why does this woman named Rosie keep replying to all of your posts, asking yeah. if you like her body? You're fired. <laughs> Find out more. Squirt emoji, squirt emoji. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, so the app is also called X, despite a brief hiccup specifically on iOS, where the App Store delayed the renaming process because they had, uh, I would assume for good reason, a rule about having apps with one letter as the name. A lot of issues. So not satisfied with the destruction that he had already caused, Musk also had the app's slogan changed from Twitter's longstanding and very descriptive, It's What's Happening, to X's nonsensical and confusing new slogan, Blaze Your Glory. What does that mean? It doesn't have to mean anything. As a reference to the movie that that line is from, it gets the people going. It's provocative. Blaze Your Glory. What? What the fuck does that have to do with posting? Gets the people going. You fucking idiot. I uh, hate this man. I also, so look, I think Hank Green is great. But he also signed up to be a content creator with X. And the reasoning is that for everyone that doesn't sign up to be a content creator for X and share in that uh, distribution pool of money, therefore, every, every, all that other money goes to people like Andrew Tate. Where my take on that would be stop providing X with content and yeah. therefore drive the value of that creator pool down. Very rare Hank Green L. I don't know if it's an L. I just don't think that he's, uh, you know, different takes for different folks, I guess. I think that it, it would, he's helping the platform by contributing to yeah, it nice. in a way that uh, otherwise ad agencies wouldn't. Uh, want to use it. So, I don't know. Confusing, but... Literally, literally Walt shouting, Hank, no, Hank, no. <laughs> Hank, 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 Hank Green, no! <laughs> uh, look, uh, uh, Elon has also, as Elliot mentioned previously, demanded that tweets now be called posts. Again, that the brand recognition that you cannot buy. Just flush. Gone. And it's also uh, has clearly tested graphical changes that make sure that's addressed. On the topic of graphical changes, uh, some people are seeing it. I did not on the web version of Twitter or X or whatever today, but they're making the paid ads way less noticeable. Before you'd have like the dark logo and oh, the promoted yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. now it looks like it just has this light uh, ad thing on the top right. Yeah. Um, so, you know, an eye out for that. But yeah, we are... I mean, truly, we are watching the end of an era. Whether you liked Twitter or not, it is we are watching the end of an era play out before our very eyes with each new update, new change, or stupid, nonsensical idea that Musk comes up with at any moment in time. Oh, he also, he uh, he, he got rid of light mode. Dark mode only. He yeah. reverted on that um, because I think... Uh, yeah, people with, like, dyslexia... They would, <laughs> they would lose a, a, a substantial yeah. portion of their user base <laughs> yeah. by not, just not giving an option. Why not just have an option? That would seem like I the mean, smart I'm thing. I mean, I'm weird. I use dark mode on the phone and light mode on the computer. Mm -hmm. I don't know why, but that's how I like it. Makes you too tired if you're on the computer in dark mode. No, I have no idea why. But uh, again, this is another thing that should be uh, uh, foisted onto the back of Linda Yaccarino. Clearly, yeah. this was Linda's choice. Linda, oh my gosh, Linda. Wow. Bold moves from Linda Yaccarino. Linda Yaks. Thanks. Thanks, Linda. 
So soon enough, there will be nothing left of the app known as Twitter, formerly known as Twitter, and only time will tell if and when it finally succumbs to its own hubris. Not soon enough. But before we move on from Twitter, uh, we should bring you up to speed on a new battle that Musk is fighting, and obviously nothing is surprising anymore, but Twitter, sorry, no, I'm going to keep calling it Twitter, is now threatening to sue the Center for Countering Digital Hate for researching hate speech on the platform. Mm -hmm. How dare they? Obviously, he is aware of how horrible and damning the results of any such investigation or research would be because, I mean, just look at the Twitter timeline, specifically the tweets and replies from paid users. Yeah, it doesn't take long to find or some bad hate speech. Or just Elon's own likes tab. Yeah, <laughs> it's uh, right which there. Which remains public. It's pretty bad. It's awful in a lot of cases. So here's the New York Times with more on this. X Corp, the parent company of the social media company, sent a letter on July 20th to the Center for Countering Digital Hate, a nonprofit that conducts research on social media, accusing the organization of making a series of troubling and baseless claims that appear calculated to harm Twitter generally. Sorry, I harm what generally? Yeah. I'm not sure what you're referring to. <laughs> and it's digital advertising business specifically and threatening to sue. The letter cited research published by the Center for Countering Digital Hate in June examining hate speech on Twitter, which Mr. Musk has renamed X.com. And the reporting continues, adding that the research consisted of eight papers, including one that found that Twitter had taken no action against 99% of the 100 Twitter Blue accounts the Center reported for tweeting hate. The letter called the research false, misleading, or both, and said the organization had used improper methodology. The letter added that the center was funded by Twitter's competitors or foreign governments, I don't know, pick one, <laughs> uh, in support of an ulterior agenda. Huh. Uh, Imram Ahmed, the chief executive of the Center for Countering Digital Hate, said Elon Musk's actions represent a brazen attempt to silence honest criticism and independent research. And he added that Mr. Musk wanted to stem the tide of negative stories and rebuild his relationship with advertisers. The center also said it did not accept any funding from tech companies, governments, or their affiliates. I do love in their own complaint. They're like, they're clearly in the pocket of our competitors or a foreign government. I don't know. Could be both. This Could be neither. Very be exciting both. lawsuit. I'm looking forward to this. Uh, well, the lawsuit is null and void now because all of the references are to a website that no longer that's exists. That's right. They talked about, uh, you know, hate speech in tweets. What are those? Hate speech on what Twitter? What are those? What is that? I have no idea what anyone's talking about. I only have one social media company. It's called... Hey, X. hey, you were out for quite a while. X.com? What's that? <laughs> oh, I can't uh, wait to go log on to my favorite social media website, Twitter.com. Yeah. Ooh, we got bad news for you. And just as an added little bonus before we start talking, or before we stop talking about Twitter and Elon Musk for the day, the CEO of the app formerly known as Twitter, Linda Yak, <laughs> Linda Yak Arino, recently updated her account to better represent her role at the newly formed company by adding an X to her name. But someone forgot to lock down her original account name and it was quickly commandeered by someone who now has control over her old username and is posting about being reptilian and has their official bio linking to the pornography website X videos. Yep. Brilliantly executed everyone. The CEO of the company, who probably has links across the internet in news articles and elsewhere, now has all of those retroactively linking to a parody account with a porno site in the bio. Wonderful. No notes? Great work. Top leadership. And now we can stop talking about it. Yes, finally. For today. We can, we can stop. Also, her new name is, uh, it's kind of the same thing as before, but it's Linda Yaks, which to me sounds <laughs> like, like <laughs> puking, yeah. But to old people... Old people, boo. Uh, yakking is talking. Yak, yak, yak. Mm. It's an antiquated term. The, 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 the youth, you know, the young people, the millennials, the young people. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't know what Gen Z or younger uh, thinks what yakking is, but uh, as far as I'm concerned, it sounds like throwing up. You don't want to know what they think yakking is. Also, it's when you like vape into someone's butthole or something like that. <laughs> Uh, I, I, I was recently talking with someone about how like clowning is a big thing that's coming up now. Like the the comedic art form of clowning uh -huh. is, is obviously getting bigger and more popular. Um, but on the internet, for a very long time, clowning was the act of pu uh, putting your balls in someone's butthole. I must have missed that one. Well, it's you know it's uh, one of the old internet things. Okay. Yeah. Well, 
Um, anyways, coming to terms, I, I am coming to terms finally with the fact that like, you know how Gen X and boomers are always just like those young millennials. Um, I keep having to remind myself that Generation Z is now like graduating college and is yeah. getting old and in charge of things. So yeah. I kind of get where everyone else was coming from. No, I have like, I, I have cousins or <laughs> cousins' kids. Like, mm -hmm. I don't even think they qualify for Gen Z and they're going to fucking college next year. So I'm like, I don't. <laughs> it's time to put us out to pasture is soon. It, is it Gen Alpha? Uh, no, know. it's it's Gen, uh, no, it's the final generation. I mean, yes. Yeah. <laughs> but that's not what they're calling themselves, are they? I mean, maybe but they this are. Is, this is shocking to me because I feel like I'm old and should be put out to pasture, and there's someone three times my age uh, governing the country. Yeah. Well, he's had, he's had a lot more experience. And she. Yeah. Anyways, let's switch over to human animals instead of talking about Twitter all day. Because we are, uh, obviously, we're evolving in new and exciting ways in order to hide from the inevitable annihilation coming from our brothers and sisters in other parts of the animal kingdom. I'm considering this next story a disguise. Yeah, you're going to need this yeah. when shit goes down. <laughs> yeah, because one tactic now is to just blend in with the rest of the animals by lit literally turning yourself into one. And yeah, this, this next story, it does border heavily on furry territory. But as you all know, this, is, this show is furry friendly. This goes beyond that, though. Yes. <laughs> Well beyond. And and when the animal apocalypse happens, I feel like the furries will be spared. Yeah. They're going to go... The orcas are going to be walking across the ground and say, you're okay. The the furries are okay. The juggalos are okay. Everybody else, we're coming for you. Mm -hmm. Anyways, uh, yeah, we're going to point out that this is more odd than furry stuff. This guy is attempting to look exactly like an animal. Not a fun caricature of one. And succeeding at it, I would say. Yeah. As close as we've seen so far. Although, yeah, the headlines that allude to someone turning themselves into an animal are obviously dumb because this is clearly just a very elaborate and realistic costume, not like an operation or something. Though, the intention is apparently what matters, and the intention does appear to be transforming into an animal. That's what this guy wants, so... This is a fetish. Whatever. And yeah... <sighs> So this story actually isn't even new. No. It went viral again recently because the human inside the dog costume decided to release footage of a, a walk that they went on in public, which was covered by a TV station in Germany previously. Mm -hmm. But uh, here's more on this from the only outlet covering this story that didn't seem like it would give our computers a virus by visiting their webpage, insider.com, mm -hmm. the old trustworthy insider. They will, uh, they're like the firewall to getting a virus from a, a, a website that I don't recognize. Yeah. Yeah. A Japanese man has spent more than $15,000 to fulfill his dream of transforming into a four-legged animal. The man, known only by his tw Twitter username, Toko, spent 2 million Japanese yen, or about $15,700, to create a lifelike rough collie costume that he could inhabit. Toko shared a video on Twitter in April 2022 that showed himself rolling around on the ground <laughs> in his rough collie suit and gesturing at the camera with his paw. Toko also has a YouTube channel through which he documents snippets of his life in the fur costume. In the channel's description, he wrote, I wanted to be an animal, so I became a collie. That's also Twitter's new tagline on, on the App Store. Sure. <laughs> Why not? He's blazing his destiny. Or yeah. Fu <laughs> Blaze up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, their article continues. On July 21st, over a year after his dog debut in 2022, Toko uploaded a video of himself outside interacting with park goers and their pooches. Togo said in the video caption that the footage was recorded last year when he was interviewed by German television station RTL. A few dogs could be seen scurrying away after taking a closer look at Toko. Quote, Of course the dogs weren't fooled. They trust their scent, one person commented on the video. The co <laughs> They're right. <laughs> yeah. That one person on the comment section was absolutely right. This is the uncanny valley for dogs. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> you might fool them, but you ain't fooling us. They, yeah, literally it sounded like the dogs got a closer look and were like, no. What the fuck is this abomination? Get out. Let's get out of here. The company behind the furry outfit, Zepit, posted the details of the costume on its website. Zepit, known for creating models and movie sculptures, primarily for television and film, uh, quote, at the request of a customer, we made a model of a dog suit. Modeled after a collie, it reproduces the realistic appearance of a real quadrupedal dog, the company wrote. According to the company, the suit took 40 days to make. 
In an interview with the Japanese media outlet My Navi, Toko said he chose a rough collie costume because the dog's long fur would obscure the human-like aspects of his figure. A representative for Zepet told My Navi that the structure of a dog's skeleton differed significantly from that of a human being. Really? Oh, yeah, wow, you don't say. Which made it time-consuming for the company's designers to figure out how to make the costume as dog-like as possible. Yeah, I still don't fully understand, like, where his legs are in that costume, or, like... They're probably bound. He's probably walking on his knees. I feel like, I mean, that would hurt, though. My Not theory, once you're used to it, baby. My theory is... Because in order to get that, the dog uh, anatomy, I think he's probably got like extensions at the end of his feet. That yeah. Because if you compare the, you know, mm. the dogs, their legs go like this. Our legs go like this. Mm -hmm. You know. Yeah. So that would that would be the way to do it. Okay. I don't know. I'm confused. Well, uh, look. They need to give this costume to one of those people that has like for whatever reason, trained themselves to run on all fours. Have you yeah. seen those people? Yeah. They haul ass. I mean, I used to do that when I was a kid all the time. There's like grown ass adults who like relearn. I feel like I'd still be pretty good at it. Mm-hmm. Well, we're putting it on ESPN along with Pickleball, apparently. What a fucking disgrace. We used to be a real I country. Love, I <laughs> love, I love the fucking... Uh, I've never actually the, seen... The DGens on Twitter finding out about... Because cause Pickleball is already known by I, the boomers and everyone else. I but had like, never actually seen it being seeing played. Seeing it pop up on Twitter is so funny. I had never seen anyone play Pickleball. And I'm supposed... This is pro-level Pickleball. They're just like bouncing a ball back to each I other. I cannot wait to like, take you to Pickleball for here? the first time. You, you know, call me when I'm fucking 65. Well, you know, you're going to have to stay in shape I'm somehow. Not, I will not be appropriating elderly culture. That is, that is their <laughs> You culture. are elderly culture now. No. Yeah. Wrong. Mm -hmm. Anyway, whatever. I mean, the guy in the dog costume seems to be... <laughs> yeah, you had to clarify. We've had some stories recently that would make you have to clarify. The man inside of the dog costume... Costume, yeah. Uh, seems to be having a great time. Loves belly rubs. But, you know, with the way that Western media has been jumping all over this story, it won't be long before we see a bunch of steaming mad conservatives complaining that kids are shitting and pissing on the floor at schools around the country, sniffing each other's assholes, <laughs> licking their dicks because the liberals let them turn themselves into dogs or something. All the kids are at school sniffing each other's assholes. <laughs> What a country! <laughs> uh, honestly, we wouldn't be surprised if the footage and photos of this guy in his dog suit have already started being repurposed into uh, proof that human-dog hybrids are taking over public schools. And this time, they won't even piss in the government-funded human litter boxes, because those are for cats. Yeah. <laughs> Dogs piss wherever the fuck they want. We wasted so many tax taxpayer dollars on all those litter boxes and the kids just changed to dogs instead of cats. We gotta let them out for recess like five times a day now. There's no time for learning anymore. <laughs> anyway, with all these humans masquerading as animals, it, it's, it does it come as any surprise to anyone that, that people are starting to question whether or not they're ever seeing a real animal and not just a human in a costume? I mean, after seeing that hawk collie, I'm like, okay. And knowing that birds are drones monitoring all of us, are any animals real? Right. Uh, so, yeah, between this guy in Japan, the non-existent cat children made up by conservative weirdos, the birds, it's like the whole world is being overrun by human-animal hybrids and other such abominations. And that must be why some patrons at a local zoo in China were demanding proof that one of the bears was actually a bear and not just a human in a bear suit. Um, I mean, I definitely have questions after seeing this bear. Something, this, something's off about I, this bear. I love this bear because it has Hank Hill's ass. It does. It has negative ass. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it, it, it really, it kind of does look like a human in a bear suit when it stands up. Is uh, it, what species of bear is this, though? Because, like, other than the... It's like a tiny bear. It's like, they call it, like, a sun bear or... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are fucking weird looking. Yeah, all the, there's, like... Five or six. They're the size of a large dog. Like aside from pandas, says. black bears, and brown bears, there's like three other species that are just like, what the fuck is that? Polar bear. Oh, polar bears. Okay, so but yeah, there's the sun bear, and then there's like another one in India, I think. They got that, that weird hairless bear. Remember that hairless bear, or was that just stress? I think that I don't know what that was, but yeah, they're terrifying. <laughs> it's definitely scary. put the fur back on. Give him the Elon Musk treatment. <laughs> yeah, send 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 that bear to Turkey for a little implant <laughs> surgery. <laughs> but back to this supposed 
Yeah. Bear. Mysterious bear. So first off, here's some video footage of these so-called bears in China that are creating such a fuss. And yeah, I mean, kind of odd looking. Zero ass detected. Not pulling a wagon. Not saying that most bears do have ass, but there's a distinct lack of it. Yeah. Here. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's definitely just because the bear is on its hind legs for a bit. And uh, the video doesn't show it in any other position. It's just like, yeah. look, it's standing like a human. They do look a little weird when they're standing. Mm -hmm. Here's a reputable outlet, The Guardian, with more on this very dumb story. A zoo in eastern China has denied suggestions that some of its bears could be humans dressed in costumes after video of one standing on its hind legs circulated online. In a statement published on Sunday from the perspective of Angela, a Malaysian sun bear, zookeepers at Hangzhou Zoo said, When it comes to bears, the first thing that comes to mind is a huge figure and amazing power. But not all bears are behemoths and danger personified. We Malayan bears are petite, the smallest bear in the world. Video of a sun bear standing on its hind legs had circulated on social media with people noting that its slender legs and folds of fur made it look like a human was acting the part of the bear. The reporting continues, adding that in an audio recording circulating on WeChat, a spokesperson for the zoo said the animal was real and that such deception would not happen at a state-run facility. He also noted that in the 40 degrees Celsius, 104 degree Fahrenheit summer temperature, a human in a fur bear <laughs> suit would not last more than a few minutes before collapsing. That is absolutely true. That's a good point. A zoo employee said visits were being arranged for reporters on Monday to see the bears. All right, get in here. May I see the bear? <laughs> Go play with the bear. Have fun. Make sure you're recording all this. Sun bears are the size of large dogs, standing at most 1.3 meters or 50 inches tall on their hind legs, compared with up to 2.8 meters for grizzlies and other species, according to the zoo. Other Chinese zoos have been accused of trying to pass off dogs dyed to look like wolves or African cats and donkeys painted to look like zebras. Yeah, I've seen those. <laughs> so, look, this isn't completely out of pocket. Yeah, it's uh, not unprecedented. This is definitely someone was like, wait a second, fool me once. I've been, I've been, I saw a donkey painted like a zebra. I've, uh, these zoos are always trying to get one over on you. Show me the real animals. <laughs> Let all these people in the cage with the bear. Anyway, a couple things here. It uh, seems like these zoos have been up to some trickery before. So sure. you got people who are right to question them. But more seriously, are they not worried about the health and safety of the bear that is trapped in its own body during such heat? Like if a human would die inside of a bear suit in that heat, could the bear who is physically confined <laughs> to that bear body, not be suffering as well? No. Here in the States, our bears just hit the pool on a hot summer day, and it's really cool. It's been happening a lot. Uh, literally here in Southern California, which is uh, just a big playground for silly black bears always getting themselves into hijinks. They're it's, so fun. It's a very common occurrence. They, they'll break into your backyard just to chill. They'll eat your picnic basket. Yeah. Um, and yeah, more and more people are putting security cameras on every inch of their home. So it's, it's resulting in a steady flow of videos featuring our lovely SoCal bears leisurely swimming in the summertime. Good for them. Yeah. We get it. Bears, we're all boiling alive and it sucks. Yeah, I, I look, here's the problem. Well, I, there probably are consequences for the bears, but me, a human, I can't just sneak into someone's backyard and use the pool. I'll get in trouble. Right. But when you're a bear, they let you do it. <laughs> That's right. Let you get away with it. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, they don't, though. They, they call animal control, and, it, it, and the helicopters are up there just burning fuel, yeah. reporting on it up to the minute. And uh, then yeah. they tranquilize them, and then they tag them, it's or always, they kill them. It's always a fun little Benny Hill routine when you see the, <laughs> the bear hunts going on in, like, the, the lowlands up in fucking Tahunga or whatever. You get your shout. Let the bear patrol You're worry about the You're shouting at bears. the TV like, no, bear, don't go that way. Don't go that way. They're around the corner with a big old net. No. <laughs> Mr. Bear, turn around. Just like our Save lovely yourself. frequent car chases. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the bears. You know, actually, one of the uh, problems with uh, X.com, because I'm on it less, I'm not seeing as many car chases. Mm. Well. They probably are still happening. I'm just not seeing them. Yeah. You got to subscribe to L.A cop alerts or whatever the yeah, la traffic there, there's an account that has all of them yeah but uh there used to be a guy on twitch that would smoke weed and watch them all day long but, they're always uh, very exciting yeah you never you never win in a, in a car chase the only winners are the viewers yeah anyway while we're on the topic of animal human hybrids it brings us no pleasure in reporting that arthur the beloved uh, what is he a fucking anteater anyway <laughs> whatever he is <laughs> 
is. What is that? <laughs> Whatever the hell Arthur is. He's you know. an aardvark. Oh, that makes sense. Arthur the aardvark. <laughs> Did you not have a childhood? I didn't watch Arthur. I don't know what it was. It was, off. it was on after school when I would get out of school. No, I watched trash like fucking X Men and Batman <laughs> and Jerry Springer, Animaniacs. <laughs> I watched uh, all that too, but uh, Arthur was on. It was uh, no, yeah, I've never. Wa- I've never watched Arthur. Anyway, Arthur the uh, Aardvark, uh, <laughs> beloved PBS animated icon, friend to children and adults everywhere, has gone woke. We, we should. We have no pleasure in reporting that Arthur has gone wo- woke. Uh, not just woke either. Arthur has been accused of damaging souls. And it's a pretty bold wow. accusation. And a, in a book featuring this character and all of his cool friends, who are various animals, I believe, uh, <laughs> they're they're facing a book ban. And can you guess where this is happening? What state has people who would consider Arthur? An evil piece of shit who is dead set on swallowing the souls of your children. That's right. It's always Florida. It's You knew it. You knew that was coming. Here's Deadline with more on the dumbest news story of the week so far. And that's saying a lot because we just talked about a guy pretending to be a dog. <laughs> One of the titles in the best-selling Arthur Children's book series faces a potential ban after a conservative claimant said that it damaged souls. <laughs> <laughs> what is this like from software shit? Arthur's coming to Arthur, fucking Elden Ring. <laughs> <laughs> of nearly 50 titles in the series and sales of more than 60 million in the US alone, it is Arthur's Birthday, published in 1989, that has caused consternation. Wait, it's not even a new Arthur? It's Arthur 89, baby. The Guardian reports that on July 12th, Bruce Friedman, a member of the Florida's Clay County School District community, filed a challenge to the book being available in classrooms because of the storyline. Arthur receiving a birthday present from Francine the monkey of a glass bottle with the words Francine's Spin the Bottle Game printed on it. Ooh. Ooh. Arthur. Someone's getting kissed. Are you fucking kidding me? I can't remember the first time Spin the Bottle happened as a child, but it was pretty fucking young. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, well, look, uh, the only reason that happened to you was because of this book. And uh, Could be true. And luckily, if we ban this book, now future generations of children will will be spared from ever finding out about Spin It was the a co-ed, I, I remember it was, a, and I did not get a kiss. I was a fucking loser. Uh, it was a co-ed birthday. I'm going to spin it again. <laughs> I don't think I got to spin it, honestly. I think I, I was pretty fucking, like, uh, not cool. Uh, but I was pretty young, and I remember it being, like, a co-ed birthday, and then all the girls had to go home, and, like, the boys had a sleepover. But while everyone was there, and probably after the parents had gotten drunk or something, uh, they whipped out the bottle, and then uh, only the cool kids got to play. Yeah. And they just kissed who they wanted to anyway. Yeah. And I just sat there going, one day it'll be my turn. One day. And it hasn't happened. Wow. Well, yeah. There's still time. But, yeah, uh, this is... Stupid as fuck, but uh, the story continues. The Daily Beast has published the whole complaint, with the reason for Friedman's ban request being to protect children. How old is this guy? (laughs) Too old, I think. Does he have kids in this school district? That's what I wonder. Friedman states, it is not appropriate to discuss spin the bottle with elementary school children. Then who is (laughs) playing spin the bottle? Adults aren't playing this. (laughs) (laughs) This is what? literally like this is like you getting over the anxiety of your first peck on the cheek. Yeah, that, gonna, that's that's the whole point of it. They're gonna ban like potty training books. Yeah, for sexualizing. Children. Everyone just has to wear diapers and piss yeah. their pants because uh, pulling out your fucking pulling down your pants anywhere. Why are you is grooming offensive? my kid by telling him to pull his penis out and pee <laughs> while standing up? Anybody can walk in. Yeah. No, my son uh, pisses in his fucking pants <sighs> like a man, like his old man. Uh, but yeah, he says, it is not appropriate to discuss spin the bottle with elementary school children. This book is found in all slash almost all district schools. Spin the bottle, not okay for K through five kids. And for the risk he feared would ensue if the book remained available, Friedman wrote, damaged souls. According to the Daily Beast, the book is one of 45 titles currently under review for availability in schools. The Guardian reports that the Florida Freedom to Read project has responded to Friedman's challenge to Arthur's birthday, saying, The entire book is about being inclusive of all friends and not only inviting boys or girls based on your gender to your birthday party. Meanwhile, uh, it was reported last week that Florida schools were given the thumbs up to use curriculum 
developed by right-wing group PragerU. The U stands for university, but they can't call it Prager University because it's not a university. No. It's the propaganda wing of uh, some oil brothers. I can't ever remember which one, but... Mm-hmm. Uh, Headed up by Dennis Prager. It's pretty wild stuff. Uh, here's local outlet, the Pensacola News Journal. Florida schools have approved the use of supplemental curriculum created by Prager U, an unaccredited right-wing advocacy group that seeks to offer an alternative to, quote, dominant left-wing ideologies in classrooms days after the State Department of Education approved new controversial academic standards for black history curriculum. Prager U CEO Marissa Street announced that Florida approved the nonprofit as an official vendor, allowing teachers to incorporate its educational entertainment videos, self-described as edutainment, as supplemental materials in classrooms. Quote, we have seen that our schools have been hijacked by the left. They have been politicized. They have been used by union bosses. They have been doing everything under the sun, not for our children, Street said. And so we have launched PragerU Kids, and we started providing great edutainment, educational entertainment for children across America. But we didn't just stop there. Now we're actually making turnkey curriculum, content for your schools. And the state of Florida just announced that we are now becoming an official vendor. This means that if you are a teacher in Florida, you cannot be fired for using PragerU content. This is fucking insane. And also just, this is just, Amazing, excellent proof uh, that the none of these people are sincere about fucking anything. Because no, no. uh, for years it's been, you know, the schools are full of liberal uh, indoctrination. And uh, their solution is to just flood the schools with conservative indoctrination. Uh, but, it'll balance itself. Yeah. The free market will keep, balance keep itself Keep politics out. out of our schools unless it's these politics, which I agree with. Yeah. Also, uh, going back to the Arthur book and how, just by comparison, this damaging souls or whatever uh, quote in context to a book uh, starring Arthur the Aardvark and his friends potentially playing spin the bottle as a way to just talk about a birthday party when I guess maybe two years ago now it was where they threw a fucking fit because uh, uh, the Dr. Seuss company chose on its own to remove some books from future publication because it had legitimate fucking racism yeah, in it. Yeah, I mean, it was... Oh, God, I forgot. Yeah, that was a whole weird little saga. People it's were... just... It's a bit ironic, that's all. Yeah, yeah. Anyways. For some co- examples of the kinds of uh, kids' content that Florida schools will be allowing from PragerU, uh, they literally have it all on YouTube, and they will strike us for showing it, probably. Mm-hmm. Although the graphics are so generic... It's, that it might pass content ID. Who the fuck knows? Uh, they seem just, like the type of company who would just take all of the ad yeah. revenue. And this episode is not sponsored. Uh, uh, become a member by clicking the join button. So any <laughs> they would take whatever the yeah. shred of anything we'd not get Not going to give them the satisfaction. Yeah, but exactly. yeah, uh, Media Matters has a great article pointing out some specific clips that are filled with uh, climate change denial, American exceptionalism, Columbus discovering America and how it was filled with savages. That one, I've, I've watched that one. It's, it's pretty wild. And also how no one should feel guilty or reflect on the sins of the past, a.k.a. slavery. I watched another one with, like, uh, like Martin Luther King. And it's these people, they just love uh, completely misinterpreting the MLK story and treating him like some mythical person and not a guy who, like, literally existed and literally, like, said multiple times that uh, he believes in socialism and... Uh, you know, is against war and shit like that. They, no, they uh, they appropriated Martin Luther King. Yeah, no, they just created, like, uh, this, like, mythical version of Martin Luther King that agrees with everything they think. Even when his own family is like, no! <laughs> yeah, no, that's not what he meant when he said colorblind, you fucking idiots. Um, I think I would know. I've built up a whole version of Martin Luther King in my head <laughs> that uh, does agree with me. Yeah. Anyway, speaking of people acting like absolute morons... Um, this is a pro tip for you when you leave the house to go, <laughs> to go see uh, live entertainment of mm-hmm. any form. Don't throw shit at performers on stage unless you're prepared to deal with the consequences. And those consequences, depending on who you throw it at, could be, could be pretty serious. Yeah. Uh, also, shit like this is going to inevitably make live performances much less intimate and cool because no one wants to deal with this shit. So over the weekend, Cardi B had a drink thrown directly on her from someone in the audience, just a few feet away, somewhere in, like, the, almost the front row. Yeah. And uh, she responded pretty naturally, all things considered. Um, she threw something back, her microphone, and her aim was impeccable. Yeah. 
Now she has the potential to be charged with assault because the person who dished it couldn't take it. And also probably is banking on this being a big payday. Yeah. So here's Rolling Stone. A concert goer who claims they were struck by Cardi B's microphone at the rapper's Las Vegas show on Saturday has filed a police report, Rolling Stone has confirmed. On July 30th, 2023, an individual came into an LVMPD police station to report a battery. The Las Vegas Metropolitan Police Department told Rolling Stone in a statement, while police did not mention Cardi B by name in their statement, the address on the incident report matched the location where she was performing on Saturday. During a concert, she was struck by an item that was thrown from the stage. Cardi B was performing at Dre's Beach Club in Las Vegas over the weekend when an audience member threw a drink at the rapper on stage. A clip of the incident, which has since gone viral online, shows Cardi B getting splashed with the liquid while performing Bodak Yellow. Visibly shaken by the moment, Cardi B reacted by throwing her microphone at the concert goers in the audience. The drama comes amid a wave of controversial concert behavior from fans. Last month, Baby Rexa had to get stitches after a concert goer threw his phone at her, hitting her head. Days later, during a show in Los Angeles, Ava Max got slapped in the face after an attendee rushed to the stage. A fan also appeared to have thrown their mother's ashes at Pink during a concert in London last week. And just days later, Kelsey Ballerini got hit in the eye by a bracelet. Morgan Wallen caught a boot to the chest too. And most recently, Harry Styles was struck in the eye with an unknown object during his concert in Vienna. How are the people at uh, the like the hardcore festival you were at all weekend uh, better uh, behaved than uh, these people going to see pop stars and shit? I, I don't know, but I, I will because the hardcore scene's pretty self policing. Yeah, they will beat and, the shit out of you. And that is not a question. The, everyone, you know, treats each other with a limited amount of respect yeah. in what they can get away with. Like it is known that you're going to get jumped on if you're up front. Yeah, yeah. It is known that if you're on the edge of the pit, you're probably going to get kicked or pushed. These are, these are known. These, uh, these pop ladies, they need to pull a, a trick from the uh, Blues Brothers playbook and uh, just put up a giant the chicken wire, chicken wire, <laughs> event yeah. so that everyone who throws the drinks at them uh, won't won't hurt anyone. Yeah. Meanwhile, uh, this band, Sangui Sugabog, uh, they threw a football in the crowd and they they called it Murder Ball and they said whoever's holding the football at the end of the set gets a free shirt from the merch booth. Uh, so that was quite a chaotic scene. But hey, look. I hope nobody sues. Everything was fine yeah. because it's just like expected there. Yeah, it's part what, of the culture. You know what you're getting at. Yeah. Anyways, uh, a lot of fun stuff. What wasn't so fun was waking up this morning and hearing that uh, another one of my childhood heroes had passed away. Local heroes. Local yeah. hero. Yeah. Pee Wee Herman. Uh, rest in power, King. Uh, truly one of the most absurd creative geniuses of his time. Created some incredible art. Yeah. And uh, he was he was working on... A new Pee Wee project that now will never get made. Yeah. That's Luckily, a, we did have that revival about 10 years ago with yeah. the live performance recorded for H. I think it was HBO or something. Netflix, I think. Oh, really? No, no, no. The movie was on Netflix, but the live version oh, of it was yeah, yeah. Yeah, also recorded. Um, but yeah, if you got nothing else to do and you can find it on the 12 different streaming platforms, Pee Wee's Big, Big Adventure. Adventure. One of the greatest, <laughs> like, from kids to adults <laughs> comedy movies. It's a classic. Time. It's uh, it is a perfect, one of the weird two, fucking movie. One of the two '80s movies to put the Cabazon dinosaurs on the map. The other being The Wizard with Fred yeah. Savage. This is a better one. Pee Wee's a better movie for sure. Yeah. Oh yeah. Absolutely. I I, I love The Wizard. No but, need to uh, dig up The Wizard. It's probably harder to find too. Oh. Power Glove. It's so bad. <laughs> uh, debuted Super Mario Brothers three in that movie. So I guess it was the '90s. I guess that one was the '90s. Wow. Well. Anyways, uh, rest in peace, Pee Wee. Um, again, just uh, I, I actually spoke with friends today who said that their parents didn't let them watch Pee Wee's Playhouse when they was when they were a kid. I was my parents loved Pee Wee. Yeah. So I was allowed to watch it all the time. I had Pee Wee's Christmas special. I had everything. R.I.P. Paul Rubens. The photo of him and Phil Hartman is just heartbreaking because yeah. he was in the show. Yeah. And uh, they, Lawrence Fishburne. They were writing partners. Yeah. Uh, that, that's how Phil Hartman got his, like, break in comedy, was working on Pee Wee Herman. You can Paul tell, Rubens. like, it, it was very nice to see just how beloved Pee Wee was. Just, yeah, and he did, he kept his cancer treatment uh, yeah. secret, like a lot of celebrities do. Um, and it, so it was sad and sudden, but it obviously wasn't very sudden for those who knew him close. But the outpouring of love and support has been awesome. Yep. So, uh, rest in peace, Pee Wee. Hometown hero. I will miss you. 
Anyways, like the video, hit the like button. Uh, again, not sponsored. If you want to click the join button, we'd appreciate it. You don't need to, but hey, that helps. Um, also, if you want to, if you've missed it somehow, we have two new episodes uh, episodes up over here. I said subs. Subscribe to the channel. Episubs. Episubs. Weekly Weird News and News Dump. Check both of those out. We'll be back with Tech News. We'll see you soon. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.